but he also imparted knowledge to the people. He pondered and searched out and set in order many proverbs. The teacher searched to find just the right words and what he wrote was upright and true. The words of the wise are like goads. They're collected sayings like firmly embedded nails given by one shepherd. 
Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them. Of making many books there is no end, and much study wearies the body. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the duty of all mankind. For God will bring every deed into the world, <coughs> including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. Amen. 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 Thank you, Ms. Beverly. God bless you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord today, isn't it? Yes. A little bird told me on the way in here, and I probably saw it on Facebook and I missed it, but there's a birthday in the house today. Oh. His name is Tony Cronin. Let's oh. sing it, brother. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Tony. Happy birthday to you. Give Tony a hand. We're so happy to have you with us today. Tony, celebrate your birthday. And Jan, you'd be real nice to have today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, look who's in the house. Yay! Don't mean to put you on the spot or anything, but you know. We're just glad to see you. Hey, we don't, wow. we don't worry too much about putting people in the spot around here, apparently. So. No. Good to see you back. We have missed y'all so much. And, uh, Jan, and Joan wasn't able to get out before. We're glad about that. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you for being here today. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Y'all ready for some church? Yeah. Amen. Let's begin by letting me declare as your pastor that the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this wonderful congregation who has gathered here together to celebrate you, Lord Jesus Christ, what you've done in our lives. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, you died for us. You reached out to us when we were far, far from you, Lord Jesus. And you love us with your everlasting love. Your grace and your mercy have been applied to our hearts. And we sing and we praise you today. Lord Jesus, we fellowship with one another. We read your word. We preach your word. We sing songs about grace and mercy and love and peace in our hearts today that you have given us. We bless you. We thank you. We praise you. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Let's sing another old favorite, number 585. And this is a good old soul song. 585. You stand up if you want to. You clap your hands. You dance. sitting down and let's open it up for some praise reports and prayer requests. Who's got something to report today? I uh, went up last night, spent some time with Chet and Pat up in the ICU, 
just had a wonderful visit with him. And that's why I didn't make it back for cricket for y'all to just give out. I apologize. But I, I, I could have, but I said by the time I get up there, it's going to be about over. So anyway, had a wonderful visit with him. Pat, Pat's uh, not ready to come home yet, but she, I believe she will be very soon. She's uh, trusting God, believing God. We prayed the prayer of faith with her and checks there with her. And so let's just continue to lift them up. Let's lift them up. Does everybody know about her week? I think everybody knows about it. You tell me what happened? She's got blood clots in her leg. And uh, they don't really know why. It could be a combination of things. It could be related to the surgery she had recently. It could be related to a couple other things. But whatever the case, she had these blood clots. And she was actually going to the doctor for a doctor's appointment and told, told them her leg was hurting. And they said, well, we better check that out. Sent her over for an MRI and sent her immediately to the hospital where they found the blood clots. So thank God. Thank God you. was ordering her steps. Where would you rather be at the doctor's office when yeah. you find out you've got blood clots in your legs? And it was excruciatingly painful. They went in and they fixed the blood clots. And then I believe it was Friday, they said her blood pressure tanked. And it was really gone low. They knew there was some internal bleeding. So they had to go back in with a catheter system and able to fix what they, they didn't have to cut her, but they, they did the catheter and fix the bleeding inside. So her system's just been really depleted, I'm sure. She's going to have to come back up. But let's do lift her up in prayer today. We'll mention her name specifically to the Lord, Chet. Chet still with the job. He's talking with a couple of people about different jobs. And I, we just thank the Lord still for preserving his life, but he's going to need a job, a driving job, and Pat wants him to work locally, but he said he may have to go on the road to make the money that he needs. So you know how it is. Sometimes you've got you to gotta balance things out. So let's do pray for Chet and Pat today. So who else? I got one. Yes. My friend in Iowa, Linda, she's the same age as my girls. Mm -hmm. Um she, in the last couple weeks, she had to put, her dad was already in the nursing home, and then last, last Sunday, her mom fell, mm -hmm. and had, uh, they had to put her in the nursing home. And she's been sick for the last two weeks, and she's still taking medication for another two weeks. But she was asked, she called me this morning crying, asking for us to say prayers oh, for her. absolutely. What's her name again? Linda. Linda. Is this the same lady we have been praying for, or this is a different one? Different isn't it? one, yeah. Different. Okay. All right, Linda, we will. Yeah, well, that's precious seven. when somebody asks you to lift them up. We will. She's 52. She's in between two of my girls. So okay. I'm more like a mother to her than a friend. So. Yeah. Let's continue to remember Terry, uh, Terry Kenny's brother is in bad shape. She put that on Facebook. We, I've been praying for him, and, and I want to be sure we get that before you all. Uh, kidney failure. Severe diabetes, that kind of thing. So let's be praying for Terry's brother. Terry and Bill, if y'all listen this morning, we love you and we, we, we're praying today. Who else? Yes. I want to pray for our neighbor um, and friend, uh, Natalie Kimbora. Uh, she's going to have surgery in November. Uh, I don't remember right, the right date, but yeah. Kimbora? Natalie Kimbora. Natalie. I'll just use her first name, Natalie. <laughs> you can burn her, I can hope say. Okay, well, we'll definitely lift her up. Yes, Ms. Brenda. Um, last weekend, Friday through Tuesday, I was house sitting for a friend of mine while her and her husband were on vacation and taking care of her dog and cat. And Friday and Saturday, I got hurting up in my back with a kidney stone and my nose down here, and I'm way off down here in Culver. <laughs> what am I going to do with this dog? <laughs> so I called my husband. I said, will you pray for me? I said, I've got a kidney stone. And it's starting to hurt pretty good. And um, he said, yeah. So I went on and walked her dog outside. And then I had two sharp pains. I thought, oh, good. It's come down from my kidney to my bladder. Mm -hmm. Okay, so nothing else happened. Friday morning at 4 o'clock, I passed an 8.75 millimeter stone. I said, I couldn't believe it that my husband prayed for me. I, I don't consider him very religious. He, <laughs> <laughs> he won't come to church with me or anything. But when my bottle, daughter got married here in 2003, he came and he helped fish. Helped us uh, paint this uh -huh. fellowship hall and remade the hall out there. The termites is working on it. <laughs> yeah. Well, God and even uses a donkey in the Bible, so he'll, he'll, he can use anybody, right? <laughs> he was raised up in the 
church. He is very religious in his own way. Yeah. Well, I hope that was a good witness to him that he says, hey, wow, God is helping us here. That's amazing. That's a huge kidney stone, too. Oh, my goodness. That scares me because I've had before. I know what they look like. I mean, I know the sizes, the relative sizes, and that is not fun. So. Yeah, I can't go to the jewelry store where I go. I can't go to the one back at the summertime, time and this one. He said, well, I got one over in the drawer, but it ain't even near that house. You can shine it up and make your necklace out of it. I can put it in the necklace for you. Oh, my goodness. Who else? Yes, Jim. Praise. Yes. <clears throat> Amanda went finally after all this going on um, to my doctor, mm -hmm. who's um, Dr. De Devin Stevens, who used to be here in the state of and then went, mm -hmm. and now he's in Athens. He said, Yeah, he was in the St. Mary's, but he has his own clinic, family medicine. Anyway, he said, I don't believe you got no pancreas if you knew and you'd know from how many. You ain't got no pancreatitis. He said, you got stomach ulcers. Hmm. And it's stomach ulcers from a bacteria that people way back used to think stress and this and that cause ulcers, but they hmm. don't. It's this H. pylor something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's... it's H. Pylor. Yeah, it, it gets progressively worse. And he said, with it hurting your back the way it's doing, mm -hmm. it must be eating into your stomach lining and wow. it's gotten severe. So he's got her on all this medicine and five, say, four times a day and, and all this stuff. But he said, you can eat anything you want to. Well, he said, don't fill up and, and don't eat a lot of greasy foods. He said, I'm not telling you that because of your ulcers. I'm telling you that because I'm a doctor. And yeah, that's what you're supposed to But she has been fine. Well, thank God. For like four or five days. Now. Thanks a lot. Oh, I'm going to get on her because she should be here today. I'm going to text her when I get home. Amanda, <laughs> Amanda, you watch this. You need to be here. <laughs> she might be working with it. Yeah, we'll forgive her if she's working. I love it when she comes. I wish she'd come more often. Who else? Let's thank Mississippi State. Yeah. Now tell me. Put from Georgia over the top. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, now, they're now number one in the East. Okay, yeah. I, 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 I don't think I knew about that. So, yeah, that, that put them in the East. Yeah, if, if Kentucky had won, then it would have been Georgia and Kentucky. But since oh. Mississippi State beat Kentucky oh. last night, that put Georgia as number one in the East. Undefeated. Yeah. Because Kentucky was undefeated. There you go. No, no, no Georgia beat. We, we beat, we <laughs> beat yes, Kentucky. Yeah. But yeah, that put Georgia at eight no, so they're in the they're number one in the East. Yeah. And All right. That, that puts Alabama. Yeah. Down. Alabama, Alabama's Ain't nothing to worry about, right? Uh, Ain't nothing to worry about. This is Georgia here. I think it is. I think they have. Keep saying them prayers, though. It, anything can happen on any given day, though. We have to keep that in mind. Uh, how about them braids? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Why don't they just finish it off tonight? Wouldn't that be good? Yeah, yeah, One more. One more. Bell song. joke. Not that close. Although I'm thinking the same thing. Just in time to see those Baseball, you just have jokes. I don't like any I have to fight the urge when I, I when I was a kid growing up. Oh Lord, help the Braves so we can help the Bulldogs. And I, I pray the Lord would give them a safe game and He would work through them. I don't think God really cares who wins. But we do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's other people praying for the other team to win. So we'll just leave that part to God. But boy, it sure is fun, isn't it? When he gives us that. We pray for our guys to be safe, and we're so proud of them and and everything. So thank you, Lord, for that. Who else? Yes, I'm sorry. I like to remember my right shoulder. It's been bothering me for about four days or more now. And I, you know, it's whatever it is, it's not working itself out this way yet. So, um, and then I have a praise report. Uh, several weeks back, I requested prayer for a patient of ours. Uh, her name is Stephanie Drake, who's been in the hospital with COVID. She was put on a ventilator. It's been I've kind of lost track of time now. I know it's been two months that she's been on the bell later. Um, you know, I kept praying for God to give her the same kind of miracle that he gave Charlotte. And um, there have been times I have to admit that we've all, uh, because our massage therapist 
is a Christian, and she also goes to the church where Stephanie is one of the part-time secretaries and works there and goes to church there. And then my boss is Christian, and we've all been praying for her, and, and the reports we've gotten have been varied at times, and there have been times it's been discouraging. There have been times I've called her husband in thinking that she could go any minute. There have been uh, a week ago they were like, well, we're going to have to make some hard decisions now. Um, you know, and, and, it, and but God has, has shown that just when we think it's over, it's not the final word. And um, she made a turnaround. They've taken her, moved her from to the next step of getting off of ventilators to have a tracheostomy put in. And then from there, they start weaning you off the ventilator. And so they've started that process. Now she's got the tracheostomy. She's had it for a week now. And we got a report yesterday that even though they've backed off of the heavy sedation, um, they don't usually start waking up this quick, but she has started waking up. And I believe they said she spoke yesterday. Um, they are having to give her, you know, medication for when she gets agitated and stuff. But they said it is a long road ahead, but she is day by day coming back and making progress. And, and, and we're just so thankful to God. God, we just continue to pray um, step by step, day by day Amen. for this lady. Um, it's just been awesome. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Angie. We're going to anoint her with oil and pray for her shoulder, too, uh, before we uh, oh, take it. Take it. <laughs> Who else? Miss. <laughs> They put Mary Jane in my Absolutely, we sure will. Sure will. Yeah. I want to pray for um, our friend Patricia, yes. who is recording really good from her surgery. Isn't that awesome? The Lord is just so good. Mm -hmm. The Lord is touching Patricia so much. I'm so so thankful for that. Are you going? Are you going to be starting your physical therapy and all? No, next week. Next week, they're going to heal a little bit or so. Well, that's going to be a good process, we pray. I pray the Lord will just help you just to go through the exercises. And it's, it's going to be tough. It's always tough. But, but it's he's, going to be tough. he's going to get you through it. Amen. I will. Amen. Thank you. I'm, I'm so glad your faith is strong. Yes, Jane. One more praise. Absolutely. I want to thank Mike. Oh, and yes. The yeah. to have Lord, Lord, yes. Mike, yes. Mike, you are a blessing to this church. Thank you so oh, much. That's fine. Thank you so much. I'm not done yet. I don't know how you do it, brother. I don't know how you do it. I don't. But you are uh, you are using your talents and your abilities for us. Uh, well, I don't know if it's talent. I, I think it's just confidence. <laughs> <laughs> That's both. That's both. <laughs> I came up here yesterday. With Linda and Beverly and they're just a toil, and I mean they were getting after it. And I thought they were going to stay helping just for a minute, but. All people have worked. Some of you guys have worked tirelessly. Thank you so much for what you did for God's house. <laughs> it looks good. I can't wait to see the finished product. But I walked in yesterday. It's like a whole different feel, isn't it? It's giving you a different, different warmth. I guess. It's but I didn't do it alone. No, I had, I had absolutely your your precious wife and Trisha and Glenda, Beverly, Jan, all these folks. And Craig, Craig, and Craig. Yeah, yeah, lots of people. Lots of people. Another Craig. Yes. I'd like to thank my grandkids. Oh, yes. yes. Daughter, for last night. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they were really hard. They worked hard. Did they have a lot of people turn out? Oh, oh. Yeah. oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the rain was really good in and on. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they were still marching through on the rain. Oh, yeah. We gave out about 7 birds a quarter late. Yeah, 7 so, birds. Uh, yeah. 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 Rain doesn't they stop. A lot of candy. Yeah, a lot of candy. Yeah. That's, that's going two or three pieces per child we gave out yeah. at 7 birds. Wow. Yeah. Wow. John. Well, I want to thank everybody for your prayers, mm -hmm. and it's, everything's coming along just fine. And then next week, I go back for my six week, and hopefully they'll start therapy. I thought six weeks was this week, but it's next week. So uh -huh. I checked the paperwork. Um, so hopefully they'll start some physical therapy or stuff then. Okay. But also, one of the young men um, that we've been praying for for the past year and a half. Mm -hmm. Um, he's had his surgery to remove the last fistula, mm -hmm. um, and this is uh, my secretary's brother, one, and um, everything was going fine, and then all of a sudden numbers changed, and, and the doctors used the word that we don't want to hear, MRSA, Ooh. and um, but then after a week, he, he decided he changed his mind. So it's not MRSA, and he's responding to the to the antibiotics. And Praise the Lord. So there's 
He's improving. Thank God. Now, what's his name? His name is John. John. John Griffin. I knew there was John. There was another one with the motorcycle wreck. Have you heard? Yeah, he's, yeah. he's actually working part time. Oh, wow. He's back on the, um, the, all the guys in the animal care they load the um, cart up with the bags, and he's able to drive the cart then from house to house, and he uses a little hand scoop to, to feed the birds. Well, how about that? And um, that also. They've, they've switched around and gave him, you know, a lot of, the, the majority of the lighter duties, mm -hmm. and, um, but he's, he's working part-time again. And his name, I forgot. Aaron. Aaron. That's right. Boy, I, tell you, I feel like we're part of that. I feel like God let us be a part of that. And he, let us he still has about 20 more surgeries to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all glory to God, but he does call us to pray. And that's what we've been talking about the past few weeks. And we don't know these guys. We might not ever meet them. I wish we would. We may, but I doubt, we probably won't ever meet them. But we can pray for them. And but I, I believe that God has responded to our prayers. God hears and he answers prayer. Amen. He's a, pure, he's a miracle, walking miracle. He is. I mean, that guy was torn all to pieces. I mean, it's just amazing. So thank God. Thank God. Who else? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Me. I want to pray for Tony's uh, health, also um, for the birthday guy, and yes. for John, um, but, he's, but she's recovering. Like, That's right, right. for Joan. Yeah. Thank God for Joan. Mm -hmm. And I'm Glenda, you were... Yeah. <laughs> I hope I'm going to be able to call. You got one of them. That's good. Yeah. That's I good. was just going to say it's so good to have Karen back. It is. Yeah. And yeah. That's yeah. Miss you Larry, too. Oh, Larry, buddy, you, you have been by her side taking good care of her. I know, I've heard. He has fed me. Oh, I bet. Yeah. That man can cook, too. <laughs> He's probably one of the best cooks we have in this church. Isn't he? Yeah, he is. He well, is. I was store bought, man. He just kept bringing it. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good man. He's a good man. I think I thank God he gave me. He even built me the very first day a little block <laughs> yeah. for me to step on so that I could get on the lowest bed in the house. Yeah. So I can step on it and then just be able to sit down on the bed without, and it has not turned over, flipped. I mean, it was. How just, about that? I'll continue to use that. That's very touches my heart. <laughs> that touches my heart. It really does. Yeah. It's, it's very, very precious. So good to have y'all back. My heart just lit when I saw y'all walk in the yeah. door. So y'all, y'all have been missed. Miss. I mean, you need to pray for my mom, mm -hmm. for all the stuff she's having right now. Absolutely. Yeah, she has a disease and keep on prayer. Absolutely. And I can't let my mom tell her for so much. What was the last one? Uh, Kate. I'm sorry. Who are you talking about, babe? I can't lose my mom. Oh, no, no. 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 God's got big plans for your mama. Your mama ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Hey. I know that she loves me. Well, I know you love her. We'll pray for her. But God is with her, giving her yes. strength every day. And we believe that he is touching her life and touching your life, too. I know you love her. Thank you for praying for her. That's the nicest thing you can do for your mother is to pray for her. And thank you, Missy. I got one praise. Uh, I, was, I was hoping they could come today. But uh, also, this is Anthony Day. Okay? My son, Anthony, turned 37 at 140 this morning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. One for he was uh we went through a twenty-five hour labor period. Wow. And he was born then at twenty minutes to two on Halloween morning. Mm. Thirty seven years ago. Wow. <laughs> it was a it was it was a, an ordeal. The cord was around his neck yeah. and uh, and we went to the IC uh Neo Nato and all that yeah. stuff. Two hundred. He weighs two forty now. I want you. To, I want y'all to see this muscle boy. He's a healthy man. Yeah, yeah. Come on, let's turn your eyes on Jesus. Would you see that? You know.
suffering from diabetes and kidney failure. Lord, touch him in Jesus' name. Lord, Natalie uh, is going to have surgery, and I pray, God, that you would touch her. Lord, thank you for a neighbor who cares enough to bring her to your feet this morning. Lord Jesus, draw her to your heart, I pray. Thank you for touching Miss Brenda with this ordeal with the kidney stone and what she and her husband went through, God. I pray that that would build his faith. I know it built her faith. Thank you, God, for touching that situation and delivering her from that, that sickness, Lord, in Jesus' name. I want to thank you for what you're doing in Magic Chronic's life, Lord. I thank you so much that she's with a doctor now who understands what's going on, Lord, and that's good healing over her body in Jesus' name. Lord, for Mike and the whole team of people, Ninos, and, and uh, Patricia, and Linda, and Beverly, and Jan, and Craig, and I don't want to miss anyone, Lord. There were so many people who were up here helping God, and we're not done yet, but Lord, we're getting there. Thank you for leadership in your house. Thank you for people who love your house and who work so hard to make it beautiful, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing here at Salem in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for Joan's friend, John. Lord, what a blessing, God, that God, you're working in his life still, Lord, and I know that there's other steps that will be taken, but God, I pray you continue to guide this path. And for the young man, Aaron, who's already back at the job, Lord, we want to thank you. Thank you for letting us be a part of that, God, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for Misty. I pray for Glenda. I pray you touch them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for Tricia and her continued success with this surgery. God, you just amazed us at the way you've touched her life. God, and with rehab coming up, Lord, I heard great faith in her right now, Lord Jesus. And God, I thank you that she's going to she's going to prosper. She's going to rehab. And Lord, she's going to be doing anything she wants with that shoulder very, very soon. You've given her a, a healing, Lord, in her body. And I pray, God, that she would glorify you with her life. And I thank you so much for her and for her faith in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that we didn't miss any. Lord, I thank you for all the congregation here. Lord, I pray that uh, you would let us just come to your feet, Lord God, as people. Lord, let us worship you in spirit and in truth, God, that we would take our eyes off of all the things around us, Lord, and place them squarely on you, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before you, you endured the cross, despising the shame, and now you were seated at the right hand of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your intercession for us today. Lord, thank you that you taught us to pray, and now we pray as you taught us to pray. Heavenly Father, uh, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Oh, Let's continue in prayer. I want some ladies. With... Angie, you want to just come over here? Maybe it'd be a little bit easier. I'd like for some of you ladies, if you'd like to come and surround her with uh, prayer and lay on hands. I'm going to anoint my own wife with oil today. It's my joy to do that because she's the dearest thing in the world to me. And uh, I believe in prayer. I believe in prayer of faith. But God, we've seen God heal people here. And I would ask you all to join with her about this shoulder issue that she's experienced. Angie, what a sweet wife. I want to anoint you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name.
Speak your own prayer to the Lord. Ask Him to touch it. Just take a moment. Oh, Father. Father God. You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes we are healed. Lord, I speak healing over my precious wife. Lord, I've watched you heal her body many times before. Lord, you are the healer, your deliverer. You are the great physician. Lord, I thank you for doctors. I thank you for medicine. But Lord, you hold healing squarely in your hands. It belongs to you. Lord, and you have given it to us as a gift. I speak it over my wife, Angie Jones, over her life. Lord, that you would touch the shoulder, you would heal it. And God, that she would be pain-free. Her range of motion would be perfect, Lord. I touch her now, Lord. We join our faith together. In Jesus' name, somebody speak something over her. Just speak it out to the Lord. Anything the Lord gives you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Touch her, I pray. Touch her, Lord Jesus. Amen. amen and amen. Thank you, folks. The prayer of faith is powerful. The prayer of agreement. When we agree on anything on this earth, it is powerful. God hears it. He, it touches his heart when Christians and his family agree and join their faith together. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all ready to do a special? We are. You know what? I was just thinking a while ago, I said, we are so fortunate. Some churches have a music minister. Some churches have a praise leader or a worship leader. We have all that, but we also have an artist here. I call him artist in residence. He writes about at least one song a week. Sometimes he writes two or three songs a week. He texted me this morning and said, I've got a new praise and worship song. I said, well, let's do it. Let's do it. We came here and they practiced it a couple of times. Him and Angie sang it just beautifully. I want them to sing it for you. I'm not going to sing it. I just listen to it.
glad we did that then because after prayer, man, let your heart talk. That's what God is telling us. Let your heart talk. Don't be shy. Don't be resting. Take your request to God. Um, we're doing things a little bit backwards. I just want to look at that offering yet. Yeah? We're going to shake it up just a little bit. I went over there and saw a company's offering land with people. It's up. Better pass a plate. It's good to give gifts unto the Lord. It's good to sow good seed into good soil. I always come to you every week, and you're not going to stop me ever because I, we, I think we've got some of the most faithful people that I have ever served with in this church. You love your church. You love God. Your gifts are wonderful, and they see He sees it as a fragrant offering, I believe, before Him this day. So thank you for giving your gifts. Where's our offer plate? Is it back there? Yeah. Cameron, you the usher, bro. <laughs> he did it last week. Does a magnificent job. I'm just glad to have you here. So bring that offering forward. Does anybody else need to take your, uh, uh, something to the offering to the Lord? Cameron will serve you at this time. And we just want to thank you for giving to the Lord. Bring it forward, brother, and let's pray over it. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this offering. God, it's good seed sown into good soil. I pray that you bless it. Take it for your kingdom glory, Lord. And I pray, God, that you would make us always so aware of the needs around us, Lord. Let us always see the needs, Lord. Let us be part of meeting needs around us, God, that your grace and your mercy would flow through us as vessels, Lord. We bless you, we thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise God from the all blessings, Lord. Praise Him, all creatures here. Prayer three, change, modify, for statement. That's what I call it. So. I always have to name them something different because I have three or four versions of the same thing. Oh, that's not good. I fix it, fix it, fix it. Anyway, here it is. Prayer changes things. You ever heard that expression? Prayer changes things. There's a fellow that I love a lot who lives over at Irish Place, and I call him up on the cell phone. He every cell phone he gets, uh, when he goes to his voicemail, he'll say, Hello! And there's this whole huge pause. He goes, Prayer changes Thanks. Every time I hear that, it just watches over my soul because I need to be reminded about that. Prayer is not just idle chatter. Prayer is not just a religious exercise that we do. Prayer has meaning. Prayer has a purpose. Prayer has a plan in our life. God uses prayer as a way to touch and to take over the lives of His people to direct the affairs of His church. Friends, God has called us to an intimate relationship of prayer. Just a real quick recap of the last couple of Sundays. The first Sunday we talked about connecting with God, how God has called us to that heavenly connection with our Heavenly Father. It's not just worshiping a, a figure or a religious history 
figure or something that happened in the past or, or an ideal. This is a real, definite walk and talk relationship with our Heavenly Father. He's speaking to us every day if we will turn our hearts, tune our hearts to listen. God invites us to His, his side daily to receive fatherly counsel, correction, instruction, and encouragement and His plans for our lives. The second week, this last week, we talked about persisting in prayer. We talked about the unrighteous judge that Jesus spoke of about the, the woman just kept pestering him and pestering him and coming to him and she would not give up because she said, my cause is just. I know that my cause is just. I need a ruling in my favor, judge. And finally, one day that judge just got so aggravated, he said, I'll do it. I just want to get her out of here. Well, that's not how God looks at us. That's not what Jesus was saying at all. What Jesus was saying is that God also is impressed by persistence. Not that we can tell God what's best for us, but sometimes we need to stand. We need to get on the Word of God. We figure out what God's promise is for us, and we know that God has said, this is a promise for you. We have a cause, and we can take it to the Father, and we can go back again and again and say, Lord, Lord, I'm trusting you on this. I'm trusting you on this with full faith that he knows what's best for us. That process is a refinement. During that time, it may be years that God works on my heart. Have you ever had something you prayed for for years? And you ever prayed for maybe someone to be saved in your family or maybe for some big thing to turn around in your life that's just going to take some time? And God says, trust me on this. Just keep praying. Keep praying. Persistence in prayer. He's leading us to that kind of a relationship with Him just like we have with a good earthly father. Today, I want to speak to you a season of prayer number three. Prayer does change things. I want to give you an example from the Scriptures. Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, 700 years before Christ. You may want to turn there to Isaiah chapter 38. Isaiah chapter 38, we're going to read verses 1 through 6. 1 through 6. There's a story of a, one of the great men of God from ancient Israel, King Hezekiah. 38 1 says, In those days, Hezekiah became sick. He was at the point of death. And Isaiah, the prophet of the son of Amoz, came to him and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Set your house in order, for you shall die, you shall not recover. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he prayed to the Lord. He said, Please, O Lord, remember how I have walked before you in faithfulness and with a whole heart, and I've done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Then the word of the Lord came to Isaiah. Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will add 50 years to your life. I will deliver you in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city. The story is also found in 2 Kings chapter 20. If we fast forward to the New Testament, James, the brother of Jesus, the half-brother of Jesus, who is the pastor at the church at Jerusalem, wrote this in his epistle in the New Testament. James 5, 13 through 16, he said, Is any among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praise. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. Dear friends, this is the Word of God for the people of God. Amen. God. Amen. Dear friends, I want you to understand, through the process, this process we call prayer, it's how we connect with our Heavenly Father, and He will bring change to the circumstances and situations in our life. I want to preface this message with a couple of key questions that come to my mind, and they may have come to your mind, I'm sure they have, I think they're questions that we're supposed to ask. I want to ask you, if God already knows what's going to happen, and yes, we know that God knows the future. God knows, uh, knows uh, the future and the past, and he, he has control of what's going on in our lives. But if God already knows what's going to happen, then how can prayer really change things? 
Number two, what can I ask God for? What is a legitimate thing that I can ask God for? Is it selfish to ask things for myself? Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like, I can't ask God for that? I can't ask God. That might be selfish. He might not understand. He might not understand where I'm coming from. I heard a little funny story. During a minister's prayer one Sunday, there was a loud whistle from one of the back pews. Little Gary's mother was horrified. She pinched him into silence. And after church, she said, Gary, whatever made you do such a thing? And Gary answered soberly, I've been asking God to teach me how to whistle, and he did it. <laughs> God answered his prayer right there. How convenient, huh? There were two young boys who were spending time at their grandma's house. They were about to go to bed, but before they slept, they had their prayers. The older boy started to pray. He prayed about the day. He prayed that now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul will keep it a typical child's prayer. The other boy started to pray, and he got to praying really loud. You could hear him all over the whole house, and he said, Oh, Lord, I need a new bicycle. Oh, Lord, I need some new army men. Oh, Lord, I need a new baseball club. And began just to talk so loud. The brother said, would you be quiet? Why are you praying so loud? God's not dead. He said, oh, I know God's not, but Grandma is. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to be sure Grandma heard his prayer. Grandma would make it happen. Oh, Whenever we apply our finite minds to an infinite concept, we have an effort to understand God and the way that he works. It seems we always want to come up short. We're never going to be able to really grasp his mind. But we can understand his attributes. We can understand from the word that God has called us to certain promises, certain precepts. And there is nothing that is out of reach for us as God's children. He has good gifts for us. God is our omnipotent. That means he can do anything. He is our omniscient, all-powerful. He is our omnipresent everywhere at once, Heavenly Father. He has revealed himself to us in human terms so that we can understand. Jesus Christ came to this earth as a man. He came to this earth being found in fashion as a man, and he humbled himself to the death of a cross. Jesus was God from eternity. Jesus was fully God, fully man in the flesh, but God sent him here as a man. He was found in, as a man as I am. Jesus had to pray to his Father. Jesus had to exercise his faith. Jesus listened to the Holy Spirit just like we do, and he taught us so many things about a relationship with our Father. He had a perfect hearing, a perfect relationship with the Heavenly Father. It all comes back to that father-child relationship. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4 through 7, Paul tells us, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, just like us, born of a woman. He was born under the law to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Sorry for that word, crying, Abba! Everybody say it with me, Abba! It means Daddy, it means Father. We cry, Abba, so you are no longer a slave to the law, to, to sin, to death. We're sons, we're daughters. And if we're sons and daughters, we are heirs through God to the promises of God. We cannot say it enough. Abba means daddy. And once again, we approach this topic of prayer. We're praying to a gracious, kind Heavenly Father. He can seem mysterious to us at times and even more to the non-Christian world. Boy, they have some weird notions about prayer. We speak to someone we cannot see with our eyes. We hear a voice that's not audible to our ears in response. Yet prayer is what drives us. It's what gets us up in the morning. It's what gets us through the day. Amen. It's what connects us to our Abba Father. It's the Christian's very lifeline. We cannot live without prayer. I want to approach a biblical case for prayer today as we look at King Hezekiah of the Old Testament. He was born 739 B.C. He ruled from 715 to 687 B.C. You know, he was known as a great king because Israel had a run of very, very bad kings. And they began to look just like their pagan neighbors. They didn't look like God's people. They had turned to idols. They had turned to, to uh, deviant behavior. They had turned to perversion. And they looked just like the Babylonians, just like the Assyrians, just like the people who were their enemies. But King Hezekiah was, was raised up by God to change things. He booted the idols out of the holy places. He booted out the foreign gods and he didn't just make friends with them. He tore them down. He tore down those altars that had been built to foreign gods, made 
great reforms in the kingdom, and he began to turn Israel's heart back toward God. He fought against the Assyrians, and he stopped them from taking the city of Jerusalem during the siege. The Bible records that King Hezekiah went to the temple, and he prayed to God, and that was the first king in 250 years to do that. King Hezekiah was a man raised up by God for a holy, holy purpose. He was a man of faith and prayer. And it was an occurrence in his life that we just read about that illustrates this power of his prayer. It gives us an interesting perspective on how God relates to the cries of his children. I see some key points in Hezekiah's life I want to talk with you about today. They're in your bulletin. And you may want to track me with them and we can kind of keep on track with each other. I'm going to look through here and point them out to you as we go. First of all, Hezekiah had a relationship with God the Father. He had an ongoing relationship. God was not just the first aid kit for it. God was not a fail safe. When everything else goes wrong, I'll go to God. Or God, are you there? I don't know. I haven't talked to you in a long time. I was thinking about right this. I was thinking about so many times on television. You'll see in a drama. You'll see something bad goes on in someone's life. Somebody's hanging in the balance or an accident has happened or somebody's going through surgery. And people will go to the chapel at the hospital. And they will inevitably be there. And they'll get down on their knees and they'll light candles in the chapel. And they'll say, well, God, I know I haven't talked to you in a long time. Help me, Lord. And God does respond. God loves. God has great compassion upon people. And God will move in certain times in His wisdom. But what we see here is not an emergency response. This is not running to God when things go bad and forgetting about Him when things are doing just fine and going about our merry way. Hezekiah cultivated a relationship with God every day of his life. He was the first king in 250 years to go to the temple and actually demonstrate for his people a relationship with God. What a powerful example it must right. have been. This man was turning Israel around. The record shows that God was with Hezekiah. God was for Hezekiah. And God had given him an amazing supernatural ability to accomplish his will in this land that had fallen into pagan idolatry. There's a great point here I want you to understand. Prayer is key. Prayer is where we get this ongoing relationship with God. It's part of the journey. It's one part of our journey with God. It is essential. We can't know the heart of the Father. We can't know His desire and His will for us unless we listen to the Heavenly Father. Secondly, not only did He have a relationship, He got a revelation. As a part of his relationship, because he had that relationship, because he was tuned to God and what God was doing in his life, God gave him an amazing revelation in his life. It was hard to bear. Have you ever heard the words, it's over, it's over? Have you heard it for a loved one? Maybe a parent or, or, or a loved one, or maybe a spouse for some of us. You hear those words, there's nothing more we can do. Oh. That's something that just brings such fear into your soul. I'll never forget. I talk a lot about my father. I talked about him a couple of weeks ago, but I'll never forget when he had cancer and went to the doctor. And he went through chemotherapy and different things for a couple of years. And I remember that day when he came home and the doctor had told him, said, Mr. Jones, there's nothing more we can do. Those words just seem so final. Those words just seem so sad. And they wash over us and they just, we just believe it. Oh God, what are we going to do? It's grief that begins to invade our soul. God, I believe, was actually doing his kind of favor by showing him what was to come. You see, this king who had brought massive sweeping reform now needed to prepare for his own death. He would need to raise up a successor. He would need to close out his work and pour himself into another king and another staff who would continue this work for God. His work must not fall to the ground at his death. You see, nobody wants to hear you're going to die. Most of us don't know what it's like to get that kind of news, but just to hear there's nothing more we can do. Some of the most sobering words that we can hear, but truly and realistically, every one of us are going to hear it one day. Every one of us are going to hear it about a loved one or about ourselves. Many of us will hear it one day from a doctor. Hezekiah, when he heard this sobering news, where did he go? Did he go see it, get a second opinion? Did he uh, say, well, I don't believe it. He doesn't know everything. I believe I'll just go about my No. His time went to God. It was his first recourse. It was his first line of defense. He said, I gotta go talk to my heavenly father about this. 
He took it to prayer. That's what God calls us to do at the very first sign of problems, at the first sign of, of anything. Go to the Lord in prayer. Take it to the Lord in prayer. He said, I'm, Hezekiah, when he heard this news, he took it straight to prayer. He said, please, please, oh Lord, remember our relationship. Remember I have walked with you in faithfulness and I've walked with you with a whole heart. I've done what is good in your sight. Hezekiah didn't start saying, it's not fair, Lord. It's not fair. Why, are you, why don't you punish somebody who's wicked? He didn't see it as punishment. Hezekiah said, this has come upon me. And I believe the prophet Isaiah who walks with God. And he said, oh, Lord, Lord, I don't want to die. I'm not finished with the work you gave me. Oh, Lord, remember our relationship. We know from psychology that there are various stages that people go through when they're told they're dying. There's denial. You tend to want to say, ah, they don't know what they're talking about. Then there comes anger. Makes you furious. Why me, Lord? Why me? Then you start bargaining. People start saying, well, God, you just give me a few more years. I'll do this for you. Quit pro quo. You do this for me, I'll do this for you. Trying to make a deal with God. And then there's also, at the very end of this process, typically, acceptance. These steps are very typical in our human experience. You find them in Psychology 101. I'm sure Hezekiah probably went through all of this in some fashion, but the end result of this process, he brought this matter to the Lord. He brought it into his relationship that was ongoing with the Lord. Hezekiah came to the Lord in all humility, not trying to demand, not trying to say it's not fair, Lord. He came to the Lord in humility, reminding him of this wonderful father-son relationship that he had enjoyed, that he had done the work that God had set out for him to do in his life. What happened? God's heart was moved. God's heart was moved. He saw his son, the Bible says, weeping bitterly, and God had compassion. God had his heart torn up for his child, and he said, I want to touch him. I want to do something for him. I believe God saw him weeping bitterly, and it moved in his compassion toward his son. The king had accomplished this work that God had set out for him to do, but in that moment, God heard that his son was not quite satisfied. He wanted to do more. He wanted to go on. One of the things I believe with all my heart is I believe that God calls us to live a satisfied life. Those of us who follow him, those of us who are his children, that doesn't, we don't know how long we have on this earth. Things happen. We don't understand because there's sickness, there's death. We still live in a world that's been cursed by sin that is in process of being redeemed. None of us know how long we have. None of us know what we need to go through. But I do believe that as a gift for God's children, he wants us to be satisfied. I saw that. Once again, with my own dad, with my own parents who died, I feel like they died way too early. They died in their late 60s. Both of my parents did. And I would have given anything to have kept them longer and had more of a relationship with them, more years for my kids to get to know them. But I watched them as they walked with Jesus all the days of their life. And prayer was not just a religious ritual to my folks. Prayer was an everyday lifestyle like it was in King Hezekiah's life. They taught me to walk with Jesus that way. And I saw them walk with him. And at the end, they were satisfied. They were satisfied because God had brought them to a place in their life where they trusted him fully. That's what God's leading us towards, to trust him with our whole heart. Number three, number three, relationship, revelation, and then there was a restoration in this case. In that moment when Hezekiah's plea met with God's compassion in the midst of their ongoing relationship, we saw him restore King Hezekiah. The father told the son, I want you to have some more time. I'm going to give you 15 more years. That was substantial. That was a good lick of time that he gave this humble servant who had come before him. He said, I don't want you to leave here unsatisfied. He said, you do have more work to be done, and I'm going to extend your life 15 years. Turn back and say to Hezekiah, the leader of my people, God said to Isaiah, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord, and I will add 15 years to your life. I will deliver you in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria, and I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Oh, 
Doesn't it just wash over your soul when you hear it say, I've seen your tears. God sees your tears, folks. Tears are a language we say that God understands. Amen. God understands grief. God understands sorrow. God does not turn a blind eye to his children's needs. Oh, friends, he loves you. He walks the dark valleys with you. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you are with me. You're right in your staff. They comfort me. Oh, he prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies. We know it puts a knife in our own heart when we see our children experience pain and brutal circumstances. We hear our children cry and it bitterly breaks our heart at times. We would gladly take the pain of our own children if we could in order to relieve them of their burdens. I was thinking about my two daughters in the past year, what they've been through, both of them. You remember about this time last year, Marissa went through the ordeal with her house exploding literally from a natural gas leak. My youngest daughter had a little rental house out in the country, a beautiful little house out there right across the street from Tony. And one day they tried to light the gas furnace for her, her the, the guy who took care of the house, and it had a gas leak, and that house just exploded, literally. And she escaped with her life, with her cat's life. And I remember watching my little girl, and how it broke our hearts. It didn't break, your, it didn't break our hearts easy. You know what I'm saying? When something happens to your child, so innocent. She had it going on, and the Lord had blessed her with these things, and all of a sudden, literally in seconds, it was blown to smithereens. You guys were so gracious and so helpful and loved her through that, and she has been restored. And then turn around in January, and her own daughter, Stacia, had her pregnancy compromised at the last minute, had to go in, and you know the story about Charlotte. Now, God kept us through that. But during that time, oh, to watch your children and prevail and to see their hearts, it just causes you to, to experience that grief so strongly. You do anything to help your children. I believe God puts us a lot that way. God loves us so much. God is all-powerful. And God is working in our lives, dear friends. He loves us not from a distance, not as some sort of a, uh, a deistic type relationship where he, you know, some people believe that God just placed the world into motion, but he doesn't have a lot of input or a lot of, a lot of roles in our daily lives. Friends, that is a lie from the pits of hell because my Bible tells me and my experience over my life tells me that God wants to walk with us. He wants to talk with us. He wants to teach us. He wants us to know his heart. Amen. He wants to share his heart with us. And the key is through prayer, through perseverance in prayer. You see, prayer can change things. Yes, God knows what he's going to do. God is in full control. God has a plan for the future. And God is in, in, has told us our past is behind us. But prayer can change things, small and large. We're not some robots living out a predetermined existence here. You know, it's hard to understand how God can actually know the future, and yet He can still change the future. But God works outside of time. This is another one of those things where we're just going to have to apprehend it rather than comprehend it. We're never going to be able to get our small minds around it. But God's will is accomplished. His power is infinite, and He can literally change the course of history as He wills. He decided to do so in the case of King Hezekiah. God really, really loves you like a father. He is compassionate. You know, I hear people call him the man upstairs. Boy, that's a real sanitized, unknowable term, isn't it? The man upstairs. That's somebody who don't know him very well who calls him the man upstairs. I call him my Jesus, my Savior, the lover of my soul, the one who died for me, the one who rose again for me, the one who lives eternally. The one who said, I can live with him eternally. That's the man. That's the one who loves me. The one who gave himself for me. God really, really loves you. He's a father and he is compassionate. I want you to know finally, it's okay to pray for yourself. Don't ever feel like God doesn't have enough resources that you can take something away from someone else. I've heard somebody say, well, don't never mind me. Other people have so many more needs. The fact of the matter is, God creates resources. God is a creator. God does not have a problem with lack. God has what you need, and He wants you to walk with Him in a relationship. God does call us to put the needs of others before our own, but ultimately, we got needs. We have things that we need God to do for us, and the Father says, Come to me, ask, and you will receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. He calls you. Come to Him. Ask. There is no 
disconnect. There is no lack. You will not take something from someone else by asking God to bless your life because his supply greatly exceeds demand. God doesn't have four pieces of chicken and five kids that are hungry. God can make more chickens anytime he gets ready. God is in control. Our Father is in control of our life. Think about that just for a second. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We are as close to God as he, we will allow ourselves to be. He calls to us. He's ready to do something in our life. We have to be willing and ready to accept it. We get to decide how much. We get to understand that our relationship with God is the key. He knows where you've been, folks. He knows where you're heading. He stands ready to change your course as you bow your knee to him, just like he did for King Hezekiah. Amen. Amen. Y'all hear me today? Y'all ready to walk with Jesus? Y'all ready to walk with God and relate to Him as your Heavenly Father who loves you so much? He's called you to be vessels of grace and mercy. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Oh, I just want to let this just sink in, Lord. Just speak to our hearts right now. God, I believe you're doing some deep work right now. You're doing some work that we may not know what it is for a few days or a few weeks, Lord. You're, you're, you're planting seed in us right now. Many of us are going to be going through something later, Lord, that we don't even see right now. Lord, I pray that we would trust you, trust you with our heart, trust you with our lives, know that you have good things for us. And through the, through the trouble, through the turmoil, through the tribulation that is guaranteed to come in this life, Lord, you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. Oh, I thank you for what you did in the life of King Hezekiah, Lord. I thank you that that same relationship is available to me and my dear people here today in Jesus Christ. Lord, I thank you that you are willing and able to work in our lives and to change the very course of history on our behalf. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's see something. 397. Listen, Lord, let us follow you all the days of our life. Thank you that you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. 
I release the children of the living God here at Spain the United Methodist Church. I dismiss you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And amen. 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 Love each other. Amen. Hugs and hands. I love you, my son. I love you, buddy. I love you, man. I'm the same person. Love you, Ivy. Yeah. Well, I always want to call you Poison Ivy. Me too. I like to call you Poison Ivy. You got great hair. Love I love both of you. I love both of you. Back at you. Back at you. Let's do our song.